Perspective is all about how something looks when we view it from a particular location. But when we study perspective, instead of looking at objects such as this, we usually find ourselves looking at simple box-like structures. But how do we go from applying perspective with a box to understanding how it works with some of the incredibly ornate architecture that's about? It's not always straightforward. So this video will highlight a number of ways perspective will affect the architecture that we want to draw. To understand and recognize the principles and the patterns that affect something we look at depending on where we're viewing it from. Because the more we understand these principles and patterns, the more easily we'll see what's actually happening in the architecture in front of us. The first principle I want us to consider is that perspective is all about things getting smaller as they move further away from us. Now, if we were to have a person standing here and a person standing up here, then obviously the further away person is going to be a lot smaller than the close one. But the tricky thing with architecture is that because buildings are so large, we're not looking at two different objects with one getting smaller further away. But in the one object, we see parts of it becoming smaller the further away it is from us looking at it. So we have this corner of the building and we have this corner of the building. This corner of the building is further away. This corner of the building is further away. So they're each shorter than the corner of the building that's close. But when we talk about things getting smaller when they're further away, they don't just get smaller vertically, they get smaller horizontally, or more accurately, they appear to be narrower the further away from us they become. And this is the principle of foreshortening. It's hard to see this in a box with smooth featureless sides. But if we put windows in our box, we can see that the further away the windows become, the narrower they become. They become shorter because they reduce in size on the vertical, but they become narrower as well as when they move away. And it's not just the windows that become narrower, but the spaces between them become narrower. And if we don't get it right, our buildings can start to end up looking very stretched and distorted. But let's look at this with some real life architecture. Here we have a colonnade. And we know in life, these columns are the same size and we know the spaces between them are the same width. But because this colonnade is angled away from us slightly, these columns are actually further away from us than these columns here. And we can see that the columns become smaller vertically, they become shorter, and we can see they become smaller horizontally. This column, if we were to measure it, is narrower than this column. The gaps between the columns narrow as well. And we can see that by looking at the gap between these two columns, and we can see that the gap between these two columns from this view is a lot less. And of course, this difference is spread between these two gaps as well. But if we look at this colonnade, we can see the same principle, the columns become narrower as they move further away and the gaps become narrower, but it happens at a faster rate. And that's because this row of columns is angled away at us at a greater angle. And so the distance from us increases more quickly than in this colonnade. And so the visual effect of things becoming shorter and narrower happens in a shorter space on the paper. So when we draw, we need to make sure that our columns do slowly become narrower as they move further away from us and that the gap between them narrows from one side to the other. If we're drawing from a reference, of course, we're still following our reference. But understanding the principle helps us to see what's in the reference more easily and therefore to draw it more accurately. And again, when we're drawing, if it's a more extreme angle, then the columns will become narrower faster and the gaps between them will become narrower faster. There's another pattern, however, to bear in mind when we're looking at an object that's moving away from us. It's not just that the object becomes smaller, both vertically and horizontally, but the view we get of the building changes as well. So here we have two sections of a building, but because this window here is closer to us, even though it really is a side-on look at this window, we are looking 
into the window from, if you like, a little bit of a front on view. And so we can see some of this actual window. But as the building moves away from us, we actually can see into the window less and less. It's not that this window glimpse gets narrowed as it goes along, but the actual view of what we see changes. And so with these three windows, we go from seeing possibly a third of the width of that window to seeing no more than a quarter of the width of that window. But by the time we move all the way along down to here, we don't see into the window at all. The view has changed and we're looking more side on at the side of the building rather than a little bit into the front of the building. It also means what we see of these arches changes as we go down further away. Even within these three arches though, we can see that we see less curve in this arch here than here because from our viewpoint, more of this arch is hidden behind this column. By the time we come right the way down here, we can only see half or less than half of the archway that we see so much more of up here. If we look into these deeply set square windows, we can see in this first one a fair bit of the window set right back. If we compare it to this third window, because of our viewpoint, we're looking more side onto this window and we probably only see two thirds of what we see here. By the time we come down here, we're, again, we're not seeing any of this window at the back of the wall cavity. All we're seeing here is the sides of the wall. And so that's a pattern that we need to recognize in architecture. It's not just that architectural elements become shorter or narrower. The actual view we have of them changes as it moves further away. And we can see how this principle and pattern applies when we're drawing an ornate building where the side moves away at a steep angle and therefore the view we get of the closer parts has a little bit more front on element than the further parts where we're really looking side on at it completely. And if we understand this pattern, it's easier to recognize it in our reference and then to incorporate it into our drawing. And it's even more important if our drawing actually shows more of the detail of the scene more clearly. That we show the fact that it's not just our view of the arch narrows, but what we see actually changes because more and more of this view is hidden by the columns as the objects move further away. And the same with these dark patches. That's better. Here's a section of wall at the Musée de Louvre in Paris. This section is closer to us than this section. And there are a lot of repeated architectural elements. And I just want to quickly look at the first two and the last two of this scene to highlight how this principle affects what we actually see in different architectural settings. We can see clearly with these sculptures that these furthest ones we're looking more side on at. These are pretty much statues in profile. But when we look at these closer ones, it's much more of a three quarter view. As these statues move down the side of the Louvre, our view of each one slightly changes that creates the effect of each figure being slightly turned further around from us. And notice how as the statues turn from a three quarter view to being more profile, they also move across the front of the window so that down the end, they're closer to the right hand edge of the window than at the other end. Again, if we look at these windows, we can see not just is there one window pane here and the window strut, but we can see a part of actually the left hand side of the window. If we come down to this furthest window, our view is blocked midway down the vertical wooden support. How much trouble we want to go in reflecting this, of course, is our choice. So even though we're looking at architectural elements that are identical, because of the angle we view them from, they can actually appear different. All of these steps are the same dimensions. But because we're looking down more on these steps than on these steps, we see more of the horizontal surface of this step than we see up here. By identifying these patterns in repeated architectural elements, whether they're statues, columns or steps, is a great advantage when we go to draw. What principles and patterns do we need to understand and to see when we have a beautiful piece of ornamental stone carving 
viewed with a strong perspective angle. And how does this help us? I drew this for an earlier YouTube video on drawing architectural ornamentation. And I still remember the thought processes I went through as I thought of principles and patterns. Whenever we have a perspective, particularly at an extreme angle, it's always helpful to ask, what does this look like if I'm looking at it straight on, if I'm looking at it without this perspective distortion? And fortunately, because I loved this carving so much, I had a photo of it straight on. And what becomes even clearer in this view is that this balustrade carving is very much based on these circular motifs. And while they're not exactly a circle, they are a circular scroll of acanthus leaves with various floral decorations and leaves carved in and around them. So I thought, in effect, this pattern is a series of circular sections going up the length of the balustrade. And so before I did my drawing, I used my perspective principles to come up with something in my mind that looked like this. This is roughly what I'm doing, I thought. I'm doing a series of circular motifs that go up the balustrade. And the further away they go, the more compressed they become, both horizontally and vertically. But this principle of seeing circles in squares was very helpful. And while this isn't the exact pattern, of course, it was more than enough for the gestural approach of drawing that I wanted to take with it. So by understanding some general principles of perspective, particularly those principles of how circles are impacted by perspective, and the strategy of viewing them within squares to help get an understanding of, this, of the distortion that they undergo as they're affected by perspective both vertically and horizontally, I was able to get a framework in my mind and in some ways on the paper. That was a tremendous help. In fact, it was key to my drawing this rather complex view. For this point, we're going to Venice and St. Mark's Basilica, a wonderful architectural structure with all sorts of decorative elements aligned across its facade and roof. And this front on view is complex enough, but with all these decorative elements up and down its surfaces, it can be a challenge when we're drawing it from a more extreme perspective angle. And I want to look at just one principle here, but in order to see it more clearly, we'll go back to our simple diagram. And our principle is when on the side of a building we have a pattern of perspective angles, then everything on this side of the building that's aligned on this plane will fit into these same perspective angle patterns that we have here. Perhaps this can be shown more clearly in a slightly more complex diagram where we can see that not just is it this top line and this bottom line of our structure that are defined by going to our vanishing point, but all the horizontal lines in between, whether they're structural lines of the building itself or whether they're architectural elements, such as these windows that are lined up horizontally in a straight line, that all of these elements also conform to the same perspective pattern. In other words, their perspective angles all go back to the same vanishing point. It sounds simple, but I see many drawings where this clearly hasn't happened for many parts of the drawing. If we come back to St. Mark's, I want to look at these six decorative towers with their statues and their spire-like roofs that create a wonderful silhouette against the sky in this perspective view. But when we view them horizontally, we can see, in fact, that the tops of these spires line up on the horizontal which means that this perspective angle is going to conform to the same pattern that this line and this line conform to. So when we look at this scene, we can in fact see that there is a perspective angle here, there is a perspective angle here. We can get a perspective angle from the very tops of these four arches, and we can see that the top of the arches all follow the same perspective angle. And if we look at the top of these mini spires, we can see that they all conform to the same perspective angle. And drawing these details so that where they align horizontally on the facade, we line them up with the appropriate perspective angle in our perspective view. It's very important. It can be as everyday 
as a row of chimney stacks in Edinburgh Street as the tops of gables along a roof line or a gutter in. The alignment of these things in our drawing needs to fit in with the perspective alignment of all of our horizontal lines in this perspective angled view. It's not just windows that need to line up, although they certainly do, but it's other decorative elements higher up. So if we come back to our humble diagram, then any rooftop elements that we might want to put on, if they align horizontally when viewed from the front, then they need to follow the same perspective angles as the rest of the horizontal lines when viewed from a side-on perspective. So while our humble perspective block diagram isn't always clear with everything we need to know, it does hold the principles. And if we can understand these principles and see the patterns that they create in a more simplified form, in diagrams such as these, or these, we can then apply these when we view more complex structures, because we know that the principles will still be in these views. And if we can find them, if we can see them operating, it helps us to observe the detail in our reference more accurately, and therefore gives us greater chance to draw it more accurately. I'm Stephen Travers, g'day, I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time. Have fun drawing. Bye.